You got it! This is a journey into sound. Kids, what time is it? This is a journey into sound. Get fresher than this. Get, 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 get fresher than this. What time is it? Get fresher than this. This is a journey into sound. You got it! Hi, welcome to Performers Dance College. I'm Brian Rogers. This is Sue Stevens. Hello. And along with Jan Rogers and Mike Stevens, we run Performers Dance College. What we'd like to do today is take you inside and show you a day in the life of a student at this college. taking a limbering class there. I mean, do you instill into the students how important all this is for them? Oh yes, I mean, it's part of their training. They must learn to come into a class and limber thoroughly and properly to save injuries because otherwise the injuries are going to make them miss lots of vital lessons. But do you find that many of them do get injured or, or generally do they follow the rules? No, they, they are very good because they know how important it is and uh, they listen to what we say most of the time. Five, six, seven, and... After the students have warmed up in Studio 11, they go straight into Studio 3 for a frenetic jazz routine with Dennis. Of course, if you're going to push your body to the limit, it helps to have some understanding of how it works. So we've got here, the rib cage is going to protect the lungs and the heart within the body. We don't want to get excessive damage on those, so we have the rib cage to protect. Anybody else know any functions of the skeleton? It provides calcium. Good, yes. Yeah. Right, we've got calcium storage in the bones, which is essential for the body, for body growth. Anybody, anything else? Yes, Nicholas? It provides the basic human shape. Good, yes. It also provides, the skeleton provides for the basic human shape. <laughs> Meanwhile, in Studio 2, Sue Bryce is putting the first year students through their paces. These students are just starting their second term and are already beginning to show a sense of performance. Hello, Lizzie. Hello. Now, you, you live in Coventry, don't you? Yes, I do. So how have you found coming away from home? Well, it was very difficult at first, but after the first couple of weeks, it got a lot easier because all the other pupils were getting a bit homesick as well, so we all lifted each other's spirits up. They all helped you? Yeah. What about the yeah. second and third years? Have they been helpful? Yeah, they've been great. It was quite hard to speak to them at first, but after mm. a while it was brilliant. The atmosphere is brilliant. You've had a good day today? Yeah, I've had drama, um, tap class with Miss Jackie, yeah. jazz class with Miss Sue, and I've had ballet. 
Right, you've got your exam ballet exam coming up because you've done your modern and tapping. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I've got my ballet exam in eight weeks. And how do you feel when you're getting on in your ballet now? It's improved a lot. I think I'm getting a lot more strength now. And we have the introduction. Thank you. And... Although the college is geared towards the commercial aspects of dance, it has to be said that ballet is vitally important in becoming a successful dancer. To this end, each student attains at least one ballet class per day. Okay, so if you just come and listen a minute, if Marcus could just play it, so... Vicky, uh, we think that uh, having the boys having strength in this college is a very important part of what they do for their training. Can you just tell us a little bit about it? Well, it's necessary for the uh, boys and the girls to have um, a good body balance. So sometimes you'll find somebody is stronger on one side of the body than the other. And just doing the dancing and the exercises doesn't always create a good balance in the body. So what we try to do is build up an equal strength within the body, within the muscles. Yeah, great. And I suppose when we, when we do part work and stuff like that, the guys have to start lifting the girls. That's also a very important part as well, isn't it? It is, because they've got to have more strength in their stomachs, in their backs, as well as in the arms and in the shoulders, which you can't just get from the normal exercises. And we don't, obviously, we want them to be as strong as possible when they start lifting the girls. At Performers, we insist that new students take partner work classes from the very first week that they attend the college. We have found that this is a great way of introducing themselves to each other, and at the same time, overcome any shyness they may have. After all this real hard with the eyes, if you weaken the back on this bit, it'll make you look weak and you've got to keep the strength there. <laughs> The stress is important. Please, can you tell me what's happening? I just don't know anymore. If this is real, how should I feel? What should I look for? I thought I had everything I needed. My life was set. My dreams were in place. My heart could see. All that goes with I see your face. Anyway, so you need to you need to enunciate as much as possible and it has to be very, very passionate because it's a lovely, glorious tune. So okay. one, two, three, go. On then. My heart could see you way into the future, all of that goes when I see your face. It's just, it, it has to light up and it has to be, you know, the most marvellous thing you've ever seen in your life. You, it, all, all the things you think, you questioned all, the, all, the, all the, the, the things about the relationship and you now don't want, love the man anymore, you love this new guy. Jan, what is the difference between the television and theatre makeup? Well, the main difference that I found is that for television, obviously you're reaching a far wider audience, but it's a small lens that's zooming in on your features. So everything has to be more subtle and more natural looking. For theatre, you're trying to reach those people right at the back of the stalls, so everything has to be far more dramatic and much more well-defined. Estelle, what are you doing today? Um, now I've applied my base, where should I go next? 
Well, before we concentrate on those lovely eyes of yours, we're going to um, see if we can cover up any blemishes um, with a cover stick. Have you got a cover stick there? Yeah. yeah. So we're, we're going to be covering up blemishes with this and we're going to be, um, you know, concentrating on underneath the eye where it tends to get it some dark patches, bags and things. <laughs> so um, the best way to apply this is um, you look down to apply this. Can you see underneath the eye? And you apply it. And then the next secret is very well to blend it in. That's right. And it is important to look down while you're applying this because um, then when you look up can see the results. Right Tara, that looks lovely, very nice. I think possibly a little bit more powder, some more, you know, take off the shine a little bit, because that's one thing we have to avoid is to look shiny on camera. And um, the blending, as we always stress, is really, really important. But that's, that's really nice, it's nice and natural. Are you happy with that? Uh, yeah, I think so. Mm. Just yeah. a little tiny bit more powder, I think. Yeah. Take down the shine a bit, okay? Right, Kerry, well, the thing about you is you've got such beautiful English rose skin here that when we apply our face makeup, when we're wearing those fabulous costumes showing our body and our neck area and our arms, again, it's very important not to ignore the body, to treat the body exactly the same as the face. Again, blending is very, very important so that it's a nice, easy line all the way through and it's not white skin and a made up face. Okay? Right, Helen, we're nearly finished, I see. Very nice. Okay, concentrating on the eyes today. Yeah. Is there anything you wanted to ask me about eye makeup? It's just um, trying to make my eyes bigger. Yes, that's yes, that's some, yeah, you've got gorgeous eyes. The thing is, for camera and theatre, you have to open the eye up as much as possible. And a good way of doing this is underneath the brow bone, if you always remember that the, the colours under there should always be lighter than the colours nearer to the pupil. Mm -hmm. And another good trick is um, eyeliner, for example. When you're using your eyeliner, um, the top layer of eyeliner and the bottom layer of eyeliner, don't let them meet, keep them open, and that will help to open the eye up as well. They're all good tricks of the trade. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, Will, right, we've cleansed and toned your face, so now the next step is we're going to apply the base. Now, a good rule for this is if you use circular movements with the sponge and it helps with the blending, right? So if you'd like to have a go and see how we get on. Having been taught the art of makeup, students are then fully prepared to attend auditions, such as this one, for an international hairdressing competition. Stuart, many thanks for coming in. Um, we know you look for a lot of different things in the hair business, yeah? What exactly yeah. are you looking for in, in front performers' kids? Well, I've used performers before and I always found we've got some first-class models and we're looking for a, a model for a national competition at the moment. So, and this, what, is this over the next few months or is it to be it's done? It's within the next month or so. so we've yeah. got to get and what happens if you pick the right one and suddenly they become what you want them to be and win and stuff? I mean, what happens? Is it a well, national thing? Well, it can only thing? do them good because it, they get a lot of na national coverage in the press. So, so it, can do, it can only do them good. So they can end up being models as well? That's it. Another string for their bow. Five, six, seven, eight. One, two, four, six, seven, four, one, Lynn, a major examiner of the modern branch of the ISTD, is a valued member of the performer's team. are covered by performers. Not yeah. only dancing and singing, but as seen here, drama. So Julie, what is it you're working with the students? What are you working on at the moment? Well, the focus of today's class is on subtext. They've been given a piece of text which doesn't make a lot of sense, and they have to understand what the characters are doing underneath the text, what their motivations are, what they're feeling but not saying. So have they done these pieces before that they're actually working on today? No, they've never seen the text. I've given them about 15 minutes to go away and prepare it with the knowledge that I'm going to direct them when they present it to do something quite different. Mm. 
Where have you been? I'm leaving. Well, what time is it? The sun's gone. I've made some biscuits. You look very beautiful. Do you like my flowers? I've lost my wallet. I put them myself. I love you. Okay, so that was that was good. But now I'm going to really challenge you here. And I'm going to completely change your character, Helen. Same lines, same subtext, i.e. you want something from this man, but the character is now a nun. <laughs> Where have you been? I'm leaving. Um, Excuse me, what time is it? The sun's gone. I've, um, made some... <laughs> Back. Up. Recover. Second arabesque lift. On Lorraine, a fellow at the ISTD Classical Ballet Dance, has been a performer since the day we first opened our doors in 1988 and has been invaluable in maintaining the high standards we insist upon. We're just going to do a bit of part of work and a bit of few lifts, yeah? I'll demonstrate it yourself. If you just slide yourselves out behind me, and I'll demonstrate it and just listen to what I'm going to say, yeah? And when I'm doing it, just, just put your foot on it. I'll do the lift for you, and then you can do it yourselves with a partner, yeah? With a partner. Okay. First of all, girls, you put your left foot into the top of the guy's thigh, into there, right in, into here. That's it. And what's going to happen? You're going to push, your weight's going to push down on that knee, and as you go up in the air, you twist so that I get my arm around the other side of you and you end up with your leg up in the air and this back over the back of the boy here. So Stella, if you like, just step into that for me and just try it. Goes into there and she does twists and she comes to there. And guys, from here, you turn all the way. See where my hands are? One here, one here. Turn all the way and from there she drops into fish, which is there. Put your foot down on the floor, Estelle, and do a shenny out. Okay, she jumps, you catch her to here, you lunge, hands on the floor, straight over into splits. Guys, from here, you cartwheel that way over the back of the girls. So the cartwheel goes from here, goes over to here. Yeah? The girls' arms come round, the girls' legs come in, you come in underneath here, this way, and you pick them up and spin. Twice round, so they finish up here, you drop them down there and pick them up and turn them that way to there. We're in here, you come back up to here, and guys, you pull in with your arms into this way, into here. The girls drop back, and you let yourself go. So you've got to pull away, fellas, so you've got the weight. The girls have to put the leg in the air, shoot up, 
And as they let their hands go, you let them go, and they fall to the floor, and you catch them and put them on the floor. So you finish up here. You step, the girls turn round that way. Guys, you step back, three counts. This is important, not that, not that, that. Hand to hand here. If you're there and you're going to pull the girls, she goes straight out of your hand here. Yeah? You've got to have a grip, which is that, to here. And you pull, she goes straight onto your shoulder. There. Yeah, see? And then when you've got her there, you just pop her down. And that's the end of the sequence. Our aim is to send out professional performers on graduation. And who better to achieve this than Brian, with his vast experience as not only choreographer, but also a director in television and theatre. Daniel, you just finished in pantomime in Bristol with Danny, yeah? Yeah. Okay, D how did you find, did you find that the experience that you gained in college helped you with that? Yeah, especially like with doing this as well, because <coughs> going outside, you don't just work with girls from college, you work from girls of different colleges and you all know different lifts and it's been good experience. Yeah, I mean, it is important, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, you'd like, you don't know, a choreographer's gonna throw something at you, you don't know what they're gonna throw at you. Yeah. Uh, and so you've got to be able to cope with everything, yeah? Mm -hmm. You think you coped with it? I think I did fairly well, yeah. Yeah? Good, good, good. <laughs> Tap, perhaps one of the most popular, certainly one of the oldest forms of dance, is extensively covered here in its various styles. bouncing like do, 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 do. okay it's too stodgy let's go back a bit further So Marcus, you playing for all the auditions at the West End, well most of them, you must see a lot of people come badly prepared. It's amazing actually that, that people turn up for a professional job with no music, this is, for, this is for a singing audition, not for a dance audition, purely singing, turn up with no music, um, say can we sing happy birthday and all that kind of nonsense and all the music's in the wrong key, they haven't really learned it, they don't know when to come in after the piano introduction, all that kind of stuff and uh, obviously they've got no real chance of success in those cases. So I'm trying very hard here to, to make sure our students really know the material, turn up prefer, prepared to do a professional audition and make the best of themselves. Yeah, because in the name of the game, if you're not there, then you haven't got it right on the audition. You only get one chance, you know, right. and it's important to, be, to not throw it away. Performers are one of the only colleges to provide its students with this highly specialised form of exercise equipment, designed specifically for dancers. Squeeze, breathe out, contract your stomach muscles. Good. Hold and stretch. The technique is strictly and strictly for doing what? For strengthening the weaker muscles, uh, allowing the dancers, as you can see, they work very slowly. And because of the slow movement, you're uh, allowing the you allow the uh, the breathing to be coordinated with the movement. So there's more oxygen being nourished to the muscles. 
also, it also just gives them a chance to find the correct muscles. If you're working too quickly, the, the larger, the more dominant muscle groups kick in and you never get a chance to work the, uh, the weaker. And it results in fewer injuries, you know, and uh, just a better understanding of how the body should be working. Push through the feeling of contraction. Now wait for the music, it's a weighty bit, and go heavy, let your breath out, heavy, come up again, go down, step up and push your body across, and a little flip at the end. We do a lot of jazz at this college, as you know, uh, but mixed in with the, the lyrical side, which is what you've done now, how important do you think that is towards a professional dancer? Well, I mean, we don't want the dancer to just be one-dimensional. The more different avenues they can follow, then the, obviously their chances are successful later on. And when you're in a variety show, as you know, you want them to have just a feel of a classical feel, a bluesy feel, um, your jazz. So they've got, to ch they've got to be able to change from one thing to the other. So Leslie, our secretary, assists Mike and Jan with the administration of the college and the welfare of the students. It is also from here that Performers Agency operates, which was developed to assist in providing work for both present and past students. This is an exercise to give you an insight in what happens in an audition. The most important thing is that the minute you walk in a door or on stage or the minute you walk into the view of a choreographer is really very, very important. The reason being that sometimes people who come in and walk through the door are instantly recognisable the way they handle themselves. So, in your own time, step forward please, tell your name, your age and where you come from. Hello, my name's Scott Waldron, I'm 18 years old and I'm from Barnsley in South Yorkshire. Hello, my name's Sarah Newbold. I'm 18 years old and I come from Brentwood in Essex. Okay. Sarah, can you step forward again, please? You wouldn't have been, you wouldn't have been heard in the stall, so really project it out. Come on. Hello, my name's Sarah Newbold. I'm 18 years old and I come from Brentwood in Essex. Thank you. Hi, my name's Emma Turner. I'm 18 years old and I come from Wigan in Lancashire. I'm Damien Jackson. I'm 18 years old and I come from Blackburn in Lancashire. <laughs> One, two, three, four. So, Greg, uh, I noticed that the girls are wearing heels. Yeah? Is there a reason for that? Yeah, I think it's very important that um, ladies learn in their training to wear heels because, as you know, when you go to auditions, the choreographer will most likely ask them to be wearing heels or to bring them along. And actually, professional shows are done with heels, not with jazz shoes. Yeah, you're quite right. It's very important because in rehearsals, it's all in sneakers and stuff, and then yeah. suddenly they get these five, six inch heels sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's important. And um, you get good lines with them, and they get confident. So when it's time for them under the spotlight, they're all ready to go. Well, what if we do? It, what if we did it on the dry run on the Tuesday, look like, and then get somebody to present? If they're full costumes, yeah. Yes. That's what I'm talking about. The directors of Performance Dance Monday, College yes. are committed to providing yes. the very best in training uh, and development of each and every student. With constant assessment of all our training techniques and engaging the highest calibre of tutors. We so endeavour to live up to our motto, performers, no, the fun. art of professionalism. <laughs> so we'll be able to... So, there you are, a day in the life of Performers Dance College. We'd now like to leave you with a brief glimpse of what all that hard work was leading up to.